Good evening. I call to order um, <clears throat> this tonight's uh, meeting of the uh, mayor and the board of trustees of the village of Burr Ridge for Monday, March 14. Um, let's see. Who wants to raise your hand and lead us in the pledge? Anna. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. <coughs> Roll call, please. <coughs> Trustee Francis. Here. Trustee Schiappa. Here. Trustee Paveza. Here. Trustee Snyder. Here. Trustee Mattal. Trustee Smith. Here. Mayor Grasso. Here. That's okay. Uh, that takes us to item. We have a quorum. Um, Anita may call in. She's away on business. She gave us notice. If she does call in, there'll probably be a, a motion for her to join the meeting, okay? <clears throat> um, the consent agenda, all items listed with an asterisk are considered routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so request, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda, discussed by the board, opened for pu public comment, and voted upon during this meeting. Five minutes, A, approval of regular board meeting of February 14, 2022. B, receive and file water committee meeting of February 2, 2022. C, receive and file economic development committee meeting of February 9, 2022. And D, receive and file plan commission workshop of March 7, 2022. Okay. Uh, six, ordinances, A, approval of an ordinance granting a special use for automobile and truck and equipment sales, rental, and service in the G1 General Industrial uh, District, uh, Z03-2022, 15W776 North Frontage Road, Crisioni. B, approval of an ordinance granting a permanent special use for outdoor overnight storage and rental vehicles ancillary to a permitted or special use in the G1 uh, General Industrial District, Z03-2022, 15W776, North Frontage Road, Crisioni. Seven, resolutions, adoption, ad adoption of a resolution to endorse the DuPage Mayors and Managers Conference 2022 Legislative Action Program. Thank you. B, uh, adoption of a resolution approving the annual publication of the Village of Burr Ridge zoning map. Eight, considerations C, ratification of a contract to John Neary Construction of Addison, Illinois, in the amount of $22,500 for transmission main valve repair. D, approval of recommendation to award a contract to Morbach <coughs> LLC, of Wynn, Michigan, in the amount of $97,591.57 for a replacement brush chipper, and to Atlas Bobcat of Mokina, Illinois, in the amount of $44,772 for a new stump grinder and accompanying fiscal year 2022 capital improvements fund revenue and expenditure budget adjustments in equal amounts of $142,000. $364. E, receive and file retirement letter of Executive Assistant Julie Tekowski. Much regret. Uh, F, approval to hire an Executive Assistant to fill the vacancy created by the retirement of Executive Assistant Julie Tekowski. G, approval of appointment of Community Development Director Janine Farrell as the Village Building Commissioner. <coughs> H, H um, approval of vendor list dated February 28, 2022, in the amount of $370,963.65 for all funds, plus $194,384.30 for payroll for the period ending February 5, 2022, for grant total of $565,347. 95 cents, which includes no special expenditures. I, approval of vendor list, dated March 14, 2022, in the amount of $297,519.41, 
<clears throat> for all funds, plus $187,814.65 for payroll for the period ending February 19, 2022, for a grand total of $485,334.06, which includes special expenditures of $132,633.20 to Enterprise FM Trust for the leasing of village um, vehicles. With that, can I get a motion to approve the following items on the consent agenda? 5, A, B, C, and D, 6, A and B, <clears throat> 7, A and B, 8, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any discussion, comment, or question from uh, the public? Yes. Can I just ask Yeah, I think you have to come up just so you can be on TV. Adrian. <coughs> And name too. And name. name and uh, of course we know you live. Alice here. Krampitz, 7515 Drew Burridge. I just had a question. What exactly does G mean? The approval of Janine Farrell as also the village building commissioner. That's two in one. I just wanted to uh, clarification what that is. So very briefly, it's just the person who ultimately has the authority to issue permits from the village. Every village has a building commissioner, has no extra pay. Uh, it's simply the person who ultimately is in charge of the building code and the interpretations therein. Community Development Director has always been the building commissioner when we've had one. Okay, so she's taking that over. Got it. Yep. I just didn't remember that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments uh, from the public? I see none. Roll call, please. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Mattal? She's not on. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. 5-0. Five 5-0, zero. Five zero, the motion passes. That takes us to eight considerations. A, consideration to direct the plan commission to hold a public hearing to rezone certain property in the downtown sub area from L1 light industrial to either B2 business or O2 office. Evan? Janine? Thank you. Good evening. So late 2021, a moratorium was passed on any new development within the business district. And that moratorium lasts until May 1st of 2022. This allowed the village time to evaluate certain items within the downtown business district. And this included the zoning of the property in that area. Janine, yes. is your microphone on? It is, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll move it over. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, within the downtown business district, there is office, which is O2, Business, B1 and B2, residential, which is the R5, and light industrial, which is LI. The area is predominantly characterized by hotel, office, commercial, and residential, excuse me, residential uses, not industrial uses. There are three properties which are zoned resi or excuse me, zoned industrial. There's 745 and 835 McClintock, which are uh, developed for office buildings at this time. And there is 800 Burr Ridge Parkway, which consists of five individual parcels. And that was developed for an office use, the former TCF Bank building, which is now vacant. From what my research showed, at the time of annexation back in the 1982, the property was zoned LI since that was the only zoning district which allowed for the commercial office development that was approved under that annexation agreement. Since that time, the O2 or the office district was established. And that is what the surrounding area, you can see on the zoning map here in the screen, uh, the surrounding area around McClintock Drive is zoned. For, <clears throat> excuse me, 745 and 835 McClintock, the O2 zoning district is more appropriate for the uses that are already occurring and the current existing structures. The 2005 comprehensive plan had a Burr Ridge Park sub area, which is the downtown area, and that <coughs> calls for office slash hotel uses on those McClintock properties for which O2 is the appropriate zoning district, not light industrial. That same 2005 comp plan called for mixed use, retail office and residential for the 800 Burr Ridge Parkway property. B2, which is the underlying zoning of the village center, is more appropriate for the retail uses that are proposed under that comp plan. LI, or light industrial, only allows for very limited retail uses, not the general business that would be permitted under B2. The Village Board and the Plan Commission do have the authority to initiate rezoning of property, provided that it is in the best interest of the community. There are other qualifiers which were outlined in your packet. 
For the uses permitted under LI light industrial, like warehousing and manufacturing, they do have the potential to negatively impact the businesses and the residents within the downtown area. The proposed O2 zoning for the McClintock properties address existing conditions, and the proposed B2 for the 800 Burridge Parkway would permit the retail or the commercial uses that are prescribed for in the comp plan. So the request tonight is to direct the plan commission to hold a public hearing on the village initiated rezoning of these properties. And I can take any Does questions. that include asking uh, the plan commission to make a recommendation? Yes, to the village board. Correct. Okay. okay, thank you, Janine. First of all, let's deal with the trustees. Any questions? Yes. The, the moratorium ends at the end of this month? May 1. <clears throat> May 1. Okay. And uh, will we have time for the hearing and then? That's the plan. Okay. Okay, great. So we'll direct, assuming it passes tonight, uh, uh, they'll take it up when? It would be April 4th. <clears throat> then they'll make their recommendation back to us, so we'll okay. have time, probably two meetings in April to consider what we want to do. Okay. I mean, we could probably do it in one, but we'll have two, two opportunities. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. So it's, it's my opinion that, uh, <clears throat> this light industrial zoning for this this parcel is inappropriate at this time. Uh, when this the, when the prison farm property was annexed into the village in 1981-82, this entire area was light industrial, and subs, there have been subsequent rezonings to fit the, the appropriate uses that were envisioned. And this is the last parcel that has not been rezoned. So um, I, I, I encourage that support of this resolution that the plan commission be directed to hold a public hearing to determine the appropriate zoning. Okay. Um, anybody else? All right. Let me see. Are, are there any comments or questions from the audience? Okay. Um, can I get a motion um, to direct the plan commission to hold public hearings to rezone certain property <coughs> in the downtown sub area from L1 light industrial to either B2 business or O2 office. So, so moved. moved. We got movement. We got a second. Any further questions or comments by the trustees? Any further questions or comments from the public? I don't see any. Roll call, please. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. <coughs> Five zero. Five zero. That motion passes. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Evan. Uh, that takes us to eight B. Consideration of draft proposed fiscal year twenty twenty three budget. Evan. Thank you, Mayor, Board of Trustees. I'm very pleased to present the first workshop for the FY twenty twenty three draft proposed budget. Uh, many months of work went into this document that is in front of you here. But at this time, we are turning it over to the board. This is your budget. Ultimately, this is something that you adopt as part of your authority as the Board of Trustees here in the Village of Burr Ridge. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to go through it. We're going to educate. We're going to inform. And then we'll have another workshop on March 28th where more opportunity for direction will be given at that time. Uh, several staff members will present. Uh, there will be opportunities for questions and answers from the board during the presentation. We have about 40 slide presentation, but there are a couple breaks. So please don't feel like you have to wait 40 slides to ask a question. Um, but at the same time, I would ask that you let staff just present at this point. Um, and we certainly will make time to answer all of your questions in due course tonight. Let's begin. Uh, first, I want to talk about the budget schedule. This is a very uh, specific schedule that we've been operating from. The budget starts last November after Thanksgiving. Um, a lot of the data that came in originated first week of January, and then we spent most of January and February either reviewing those numbers, perfecting those numbers, or assembling the physical document. It takes us a couple weeks to actually put it into document form as you see here tonight. The document that you see in front of you has won two GFOA awards in the past for one of two villages in the entire state of Illinois who've gotten both the general excellence recognition as well as the capital special recognition. So uh, kudos to our staff who really <coughs> that forward, that's finance our two consultants, which we've brought on board in the past year. They've done a great job in presenting this tonight in a digestible format. Um, again, I want to quickly talk about the review and adoption process. The first is tonight. This is a high-level review of the overall budget. It's meant to be educational and informational, and again, opportunity for discussion and direction at the conclusion. 
in two weeks, we'll come back at the regular 7 p.m. time for a revised fund level budget update. We do have some things which have changed in the past few weeks. Um, we do want to correct those and just make sure we have the most up-to-date budget possible. But on March 28th will be the time that we need to have the last opportunity for direction. And that's because on April 11th, there'll be a public hearing to approve a budget. It takes about a week just to write the ordinance. So we can't have changes on the fly on April 11th. So I do encourage the board to make direction tonight or in two weeks on the 28th. And again, there will be two opportunities for final direction. So please don't feel like you have to get it all on tonight, but we certainly will take any direction you have. And then on the 11th, as I said, we'll simply have the public hearing. We will not be taking additional changes at the meeting just based on the way the legal is written. <coughs> These are just some of our basic goals and principles. The first is that we have a general fund balance principle of 20% of this year's recurring expenditures along with the current expenditures paid with current revenues. The current general fund complies with this policy. The pension fund also has a policy which we comply with. And then finally, staff operates under a zero-based budgeting perspective, which is that the budget is built from zero, from the ground up. Everything in the budget must be, must be justified and nothing is considered a given. We don't just add 2%, 3%, 5% inflation to everything. We look at every line item, that's why it's in the back of your budget, under the notes that every line item has a purpose, has a function, provides value to the residents and businesses of the community. <coughs> All right, so fiscal summary, where do we stand? Um, I think the village is overall in very good shape considering the last two years of COVID-19 inflation, a number of other things. Of course, we've had some unrest in Europe, as you've obviously heard. This budget does not specifically take that into account because it closed prior to uh, one sovereign nation invading another. Uh, so we'll certainly try to do our best to take that into account for the next meeting. But overall, the village is in a very structurally sound financial uh, architecture position. Um, we have a lot of our general fund, which generates, um, we have a number of revenue sources which generate a lot of revenue for the village. You're not relying on any one source of revenue to survive, nor are you committed to having bad revenue overall. We also do not have a reliance on grants, ARPA, fund balance for your day-to-day -day operations. The board and the village pay for what they need on a daily basis with their daily revenue. Everything one time, such as grants, ARPA, fund balance, is above and beyond. We do not rely on those things to survive. We have a good mix of utility revenue. We have financial, we have a flexible position. You have about $4 million in unreserved fund balance in the general fund. You also have significant fund balance in a number of other funds throughout the village's financial architecture. The police pension fund has trended up over the last two years, thankfully. We're at about 70% funded. One of the big highlights we had in FY22, the village carries no long-term debt at this time. The budget does reflect a debt service fund, but that's only to reflect what we've done in the past. We have no debt going forward. Finally, we have priority and quality at value. The village itself is only about 1.5% of the total property tax bill. Schools, fire district, a number of other things are much larger than us. We're a very small bite of the apple of someone's property taxes. We have minimal resident fees. We don't have vehicle stickers. We have free downtown parking. We don't charge you every time you try to interact with the village, and we're very proud of that. Finally, you have high quality services with broad, deep, and agile staff across all departments. The village is in a very good place personnel-wise, and we're very proud to see a lot of progress on that as we've come out of the pandemic. So again, the village is in a very good position financially, budgetarily, in terms of net position, and it's continuing to improve with a lot of the investments we're making this year. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Anne Marie, our finance consultant. She's gonna take you through some of the guts of the general fund, some of our capital programs, and the like. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so I'm going to kind of start summary and then get into a little more detail as we go on and then each of the departments will kind of come up here. Am I loud enough? Um, will come up here and present their own budgets within their own departments. I, um, you're loud enough for me, but if you stray a little bit from that microphone, unfortunately, we okay. lose you. Okay. I will stay as close as I can. Okay. So just kind of broad overview, the revenue budget and the expenditure budget are listed up there. Um, expenditures do exceed revenues in total across all funds, but within the general fund, the revenues do exceed the expenditures, which is within the <coughs> village's policy. Um, the projected fund balance at the end of April of 2023 is approximately $5.8 million, which is just over 64% of general operating expenditures, which is well above the required minimum per our policy as well as well above best practices that are dictated by GFOA. 
Um, minimal property tax increase this year. The entire increase went towards the police pension fund. Um, we do, but or we do fund it on the minimum required, um, as opposed to the uh, recommended. But we did fund slightly more than what was minimum requirement. Uh, salary and benefits is probably the biggest chunk of the village's budget at about seven point four million dollars. Um, the annual increase for the last four years has only been about 1.8% per year, which is significant considering the cost of labor and the cost of health care um, that the village incurs. Uh, 2023 CIP spending is about $3.3 .3 million, um, and there's nearly $20 million um, budgeted <coughs> in future years for CIP improvements. The capital spending is about 16% of the village's overall spending in the 2023 budget. Okay, I just kind of wanted to talk through some presentation changes because we did change a little bit of um, the funds that the village utilizes to record its finances. Like Evan mentioned, the village paid off its debt in full and is completely debt free, so the debt service fund will be collapsed. We'll see it in this budget document. We'll also see it in the annual audit this year, but after that, you won't see that fund anymore. Uh, we did move the information technology activity from the information technology fund into the general fund. That's where the majority of the cost is incurred, and it just made sense to consolidate it into a department within the general fund. Uh, <coughs> sidewalk pathway and equipment were collapsed into the CIP fund. This way, all of your infrastructure type spending is all recorded in one fund. And then we did create the downtown business district fund for the new district business searches that went into effect on January 1st of 2022. This simplifies the presentation for the audit, um, just simplifies record keeping in general by combining those funds. Um, this is really just, and it's probably hard to see up on the, on the screen, it's really just kind of a summary of all of the funds that the village has and how they fall into different categories. There's governmental funds, there's proprietary, those are the funds that are supposed to make money and survive on their own. And then you have your fiduciary fund, which is your police pension fund. This is mostly related to financial statement presentation, um, but it is the different categories that the village does um, categorize as revenue and spending. Um, another one that's probably hard to read up on the screen, it's kind of small, um, but it shows just kind of fund by fund where we're going to end in 2022, what our revenues are by fund and what the expenditures are by fund for fiscal year 2023. Probably the biggest item to note is the general fund has a net gain of about $500,000, which is awesome. Um, motor fuel continues to grow. We do continue to receive the Build Illinois dollars. Um, there's six installments. We have four of them. We're expected to get the fifth one in a couple weeks. And those funds will be used in the future to fund road projects. Um, the business district fund has a significant fund balance projected at the end of 2023. There's no spending planned in that fund for fiscal year 2023. But obviously, we're hoping to generate significant revenue. Um, the CIP fund, that does include the remaining fund balance that was available in the <coughs> sidewalk pathway as well as the equipment replacement. And those funds, that 566,000 is available to fund future capital projects. Uh, the water fund, the balance is below a uh, fund balance that the industry standards kind of recognize. But the, as you know, the village did do a recent rate study and a, a capital plan, so the rates will be adjusted on 5-1 of 2023 to help us build back up that fund balance in order to fund those water projects that are coming along in the future years. If I'm going too fast, let me know. Um, oh, just one note too, the police pension fund, um, it does show spending of a little bit more than revenue. Um, our fund is starting to mature where we have a lot of retirees. We're going to start drawing on that fund as opposed to just putting into the fund. But our valuation at 430 at 21 was 72% funded, which is a really good funding level. 72? 72.1. Sorry. Okay. So um, this next slide just kind of shows the history of the different funds over the last four fiscal years. I think the biggest item to note is the general fund balance continues to grow. We went through the pandemic and our fund balance is higher than it was in 2020 and that's, that's a great story. Um, so um, should we do questions as we go or? Three more slides. Okay. 
Okay, sorry. Um, fund balance in the CIP fund. Um, we, there is some ARPA funding <coughs> in that fund for fiscal year 2023, along with um, transfers from the general fund and motor fuel tax. But the, like as you can see on the slide, there's a significant amount that's left for future funding, not only of ARPA funds, but also of fund balance in that fund. I'm going to jump to a totally different topic. So just a quick personnel overview. Um, the fiscal year 2023 budget includes 56 full-time and 15 part or 16 part-time positions, 20 non-union, 10 public works union, and 26 in the police unions. Total salaries are about $5.4 million. Um, approximately 2.1 million of that is health benefits and pension benefits. Uh, there is a um, listing on, in the back of the book of the individual positions along with the salaries that are budgeted for those positions in 2023. That's a requirement of GFOA that we include that in this book that we're gonna submit for the award. Um, some position changes within the year, obviously the outsourcing of the finance department to consultants. I think it's going really well. Um, elimination of a planner position and the addition of the community development director. Uh, the community development function was completely integrated into the public works department. The 2023 budget does reflect a new deputy chief position in the police department and an additional part-time position in administration. Uh, capital improvement plan. So last year the board did approve the village's first ever capital asset policy and as part of that policy it stated that the village would develop a capital improvement plan. So we've started to develop that long-term plan and put it together and that's what you see before you. Um, fiscal year 2023 has about 3.3 million in capital spending but if you add the five years together it's just under 20 million in capital spending that is planned. Um, the plan will change over year over year, and we'll use this plan to develop the annual budget going forward. <clears throat> Just a snapshot of how the village is currently funding its capital uh, plan. Um, there's different sources. We transfer general fund revenues. We have motor fuel tax revenues. Sewer and water pay for their own capital projects with user fees. Uh, motor fuel tax, and then we do have ARPA funding in the 2023 budget, which represents about 15% of the overall capital funding amount. There's no new debt in the 2023 budget, so none of the capital will be debt funded in that year. And then the individual components of the capital plan we'll be discussing as we kind of go through the departmental budgets. Uh, this last slide, I think you may have seen this. I think Evan might have handed this out before. It's just kind of what our current plan is for the spending of the ARPA funds that we have. Um, this is going to change. We recently know, were notified that we received a pretty significant grant that we were going to use ARPA funds for. So this will change, and I think by the 28th of March, we'll probably bring you a revised ARPA spending plan. All right, at this time, I do want to entertain questions from the board. Thank you. Okay, let's start with the trustees. Anyone want to kick it off? <clears throat> yes, Tony. Um, so some of the older trustees here are used to um, the information technology replacement fund uh, and wanted to know what the logic was for closing that fund and moving it into the general fund. Yeah, so there was a couple reasons. Um, the Information Technology Fund is what you call an internal service fund. So it's really just a fund that records the spending that occurs kind of across the whole village by all the different departments and funds. When the majority of it is really being incurred by your general fund functions, it makes more sense to just make it part of that fund instead of having it separate. So it, it's really just a a financial reporting tool and it just kind of simplifies your presentation. The water and sewer funds always made contributions to that IT fund mm -hmm. to help pay for IT and they still will but those transfers will just go into the general fund instead of the IT fund. It's, it's a separate department in the general fund so we'll still be able to report those expenditures separately but as a department instead of a fund. Thank you. Yes, Russ. Thank you. Um, great work on the budget, by the way. So I appreciate everything you've been doing on here. You had mentioned uh, regards to the police pension fund. Yes, I understand it's 72%. 
that can change easily with depending on the markets out there and we have some very significant returns on investment I, from what I understand on the pension returns. Here's my concern. We only give the Illinois statutory minimum to the pension and if any of us here in this room, I would highly suggest if you haven't, you need to look at this. Our annual report from Lauterbach and Lehman, in that report, it talks about in the next five years, our, our payments to the pension, outgoing monies, is going to increase 35 to 40%. In 10 years, that goes up to 65, 70%. So if we maintain the minimum threshold that Illinois is suggesting, it is in this document that suggests that we will be in trouble. Not today, but it's something that I think we as a board really need to kind of look um, and quickly look at what our options are. I am one of those individuals I was a little disappointed to see that we did not, in this plan, add more money to the pension um, because we are very uh, strong financially. We do have some access funds. So we've talked about in the past in meetings about maybe we should have a, a goal setting agenda or a goal setting a program where we look at the pensions, we look at um, the buildings, whether it's the village hall or public works building. Those are the things that we kind of miss in this whole budget process because this budget is about this year. And I think we kind of lose a little sight on should we look three years, five years, 10 years down the line? Because this is a perfect example. If we have a $400,000 surplus, I would like to see some more money go towards the police pension. I'd like to see some money go and earmark towards the new building structures. Not that it's in the plan today, but we know we're going to eventually need those, um, those expenses down the line. So that's just kind of my commentary that I would like to see us as a board kind of pursue that um, and ask staff to look at how can we approach the police pension um, because, you know, as we know very recently, stock market doesn't always go up. And I've had a discussion with Evan that, you know, what happens if we get hit really hard in our pension returns? Did the money managers <clears throat> anticipate this or are we going to find that is a, a problem um, in the next 12 months for our returns so that's just my ask I know that you know you folks are very busy but I think that if all of us here as trustees ask that maybe we can kind of pursue a um, you know a, a separate meeting to kind of look at how can we apply some monies for the future that we've done so well in the last couple fiscal years um, the one thing I don't want to be is that trustee that says, well, what are the other villages doing? I'd rather have Burr Ridge be the leader like we are on the, on the debt service. That, that to me is fantastic. It sends a great signal to our residents and I want to continue that trend on how we deal with the pension <clears throat> and other things down the road, especially the, the infrastructure of the, of the village. So that's my commentary. Um, I would like to see something pushed forward by staff on kind of looking <laughs> at those options. Thank you. Thank, um, just let me make a comment, then we'll go around. <clears throat> um, great comments. Thank you. Um, I think that you're aware that we have been speaking about uh, what do we do long term with the police pension. Uh, we have had it on. Um, certainly, I've made it a priority since I've come back. Uh, we talked in general about mm -hmm. Gee, if we had a million dollars, would it, you know, I think we, when Anita was here, uh, we uh, not, I mean, when she was here, she was at a meeting, we talked about if we had a million dollars, would it be better to just put a million dollars in there or do you get more bang for buck at 100 grand a year, but we'll, we'll put the million dollars on the side to make sure for 10 years we have it. So I think those are, have been discussed and they will be discussed uh, and they are not off the table, but they're not for this budget necessarily. Um, but but it does come up when when the police pension. I'm even frankly even more uh, encouraged that uh, you know there is more to do. But at 72%, I, I was working with a number in my head that was 68%. Yeah. So I, w I was pretty um, I was pretty pleased to hear that. And of course, as you pointed out, there was a 23 24% return 
um, in this last year, and I don't think we could bank on that, uh, nor should we. <clears throat> so I think uh, the good news is that we have a budget that um, we have a lot to play with, but we have not lost sight. It has been within our sights um, uh, about the police pension, and we're in a better place than ever, as far as I can understand, uh, to address that issue as we go forward into fiscal year 23, Russ. Um, Joe, you had a question. Trustee Smith makes a lot of good points, but we have uh, discussed this uh, numerous times with Trustee Mattel, uh, Evan, as well as Doug Pryor, Pryor, going over and over about that million dollars or versus this where I'm a little more aggressive than Trustee Smith. Not with regard to paying more forward, especially when most of the other villages in the state of Illinois are so basically almost broke deficit. So us being as we're, we're at is exceptional. Second of all, our money is our money, from what I understand. No one can touch ours. It's here for us. You can look at forward going 20, 30. You can't predict tomorrow anyway. At the end of the day, what we've done here so far is myself as the previous trustees way before me, all it's done is gotten better. You, Mayor, <clears throat> the last few times when we spent a lot of time, whether we do half million, million, million and a half, we exhausted that. We tabled it. Trustee Paveza was very pleased at that meeting that we felt better that we were given some money toward it. So at this particular time, I'm very comfortable with what we've done. I do not wish to put more into the pension plan. I like to follow what we're doing or follow the capacity and even discuss it. There's no reason to go get up to 85, 95% in case the state makes a change and then dumps in for money. Well, we would miss ours because we'd be at the 75, 85%. Well, if you guys weren't so good, we would give you more money. I don't want to get a, you know, give our money away. So with regards to that, thank you. Right, and then the footnote on that is when you put that money in that account, you cannot take move. it back. Okay, so that's always a little bit of, of the reins. Um, once we put that money in there, it's locked. It's not like some of our other funds that we can move it around. So I think the overall health of the pension plan is uh, the police pension <clears throat> plan will always be uh, uh, with this board and the next boards and the next mayors. Um, the good news is I think we do have uh, something that we can give. Uh, going forward uh, in that regard, we'll have, that, that's a very good problem to have and we'll have a nice debate. Uh, Guy, you had a question? <clears throat> Just a few comments. Uh, first of all, thank you to the uh, finance department and the staff and all the department heads for putting together an excellent budget for cutting costs, for trimming to the bone and for doing always doing more with less. I appreciate it, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to see that we did contribute a little bit extra to the police pension fund than the state minimum requirement, a few thousand extra dollars, but it's, it's a little bit more than, than what the state required. And, and I always call it what the state requires is a minimum payment on our credit card. You, we would just keep making the minimum payment year after year, just like you were make, you'd be making a minimum payment on your credit card. I agree with Trustee Smith. Uh, we need to have our goal setting workshops. It's been five, four years since we had our last goal setting workshop. I can't remember. We're long overdue, and we need to come establish some long-term goals uh, for this village, uh, new facilities, uh, major capital projects, major improvements, et cetera, so that we can then plan today for those goals, so we can achieve those goals five and 10 years from, from today. Uh, Trustee Snyder, I I'm uh, not gonna agree with you that the state's gonna come along and bail us out on our pension fund. It's not gonna happen in my lifetime, your lifetime. I'm not holding my breath. They're, they've got such a mess on their hands with their own pension funding, they're not going to come and bail us out. So uh, I think it's not going to happen. We did go through the scenarios, uh, numerous scenarios on how, if we had an extra million dollars, what we could do, would do with that. And of course, it boiled down to the one lump sum payment or $100,000 payments over 10 years and the best bang for the buck for the pension fund. And I'd still like to consider those as well. So we are running at surpluses the last few years. We uh, we were so fortunate to weather the pandemic the way we did, but it was all due to the hard work of our staff and our employees, uh, and they should be congratulated for that. Uh, it's all the comments I have for right now, but thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Any comments so far from anybody in the audience, in the public? Any questions? Yes, sir, come on up. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dwayne Hong. Um, I'm a resident at 6201 
South Grand Street. Um, I'm here to talk about the Garfield Street sidewalk. Um, you know, I, I had an opportunity to follow the January 10th board meeting where it was discussed some of the ARPA funds that was proposed by the Pathways Commission be, be used to build a 500, 600 foot section of sidewalk. So I understand that the village subdivision ordinance requires all new you know, streets um, for developers to build sidewalks on both sides of the street. And then we have an area of Burr Ridge where there is no sidewalk. <clears throat> and I've been a five-year resident of Burr Ridge, don't know a lot of the history. However, I've done some research where I've been able to see that the Pathways Commission has recommended the Garfield Street sidewalk as a high priority project listed number seven back in 2009. The latest um, project listing that I've seen, it appears that the Garfield Street sidewalk is now number three, only behind a couple sort of commercial areas on Frontage Road at County Line or 83rd Street. Um, you know, and speaking on, on 83rd, you know, off of Illinois 83 there, um, you know, in light of the tragic pedestrian hit and run um, early, you know, last week, um, you know, public safety is, is something that, that we've got to be proactive on. Um, so I, I'd like to appeal to the board to reconsider uh, possibly utilizing any of those un, uncommitted funds to fund the sidewalk. I have spoken to Willowbrook trustees, uh, Gay O'Neill and Umberto Davi. They have been on board. Um, I understand that, that Willowbrook is, it has been willing to share the costs in building the sidewalk, which is, which is great news. Um, so I, I have a petition which I have provided to, uh, to, to Evan, and I believe he's shared to, to the entire board here of, of at this time, um, like 90, 90, over 90 petitioners um, seeking the building of the sidewalk. Um, I drive that route every single day. I'm an album school parent in HMS. Um, there's, there's runners, walkers that I see daily um, having to walk on the street because of a lack of a sidewalk. Thank you, Mr. Hong. Um, it, it's been on our radar, as um, you have indicated, um, and it certainly will be considered uh, when we're looking at the budget here. Uh, and as you've noted, <clears throat> it's gone up in priority uh, over the years. So um, appreciate your comments. Appreciate the hard work you've done to get uh, petitioners. We are and have been aware of the Village of Willowbrook's support. Um, a couple of the uh, trustees you mentioned I know personally, uh, and I know that they're in favor of it too. I believe they would contribute money <clears throat> towards it. So um, it's on our radar. We, we hear you um, and like the police pension. Um, there are projects that we um, want to consider and uh, we have the luxury of uh, having extra money. Uh, and so um, we're gonna consider it. Absolutely. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd like to have Anne Marie continue on the discussion at this point. Thank you, go ahead. Okay, so now we're gonna actually get into the general fund where this is where the meat of our operating expenditures are recorded. Um, it's a general, it's the main operating fund of the village. Everything is in that fund unless it's required to be in another fund. Um, we're seeing revenues really bounce back from previous levels. Um, I believe that the revenue mark that we're hitting in 2023 is the highest ever that we've seen in old budgets and old audit reports, so that's awesome. Um, the uh, general fund revenues are about 44% of your total revenue, so obviously that's a big fund that records a lot of your activity. Um, only 2% of the general fund revenue for 2023 is ARPA funds, which is a one-time revenue source, so that's pretty good that you're not really utilizing that to fund the operating part of your budget. Um, just a couple things, revenue is about 14% higher than the 2020 level, which is phenomenal. Um, personnel costs, I think I mentioned this earlier, are growing very slowly over the last four years. 
so they're not outpacing your revenue growth, uh, which is always a good thing. Um, this next slide is uh, kind of just contains a little bit more detail of what your revenue sources are. Obviously, taxes are the biggest portion, sales tax, home rule tax, property taxes, income tax, those kind of items um, are in there. Uh, Personnel, like I said earlier, is the biggest part of your spending, and within the general <coughs> fund, it definitely is. Um, your general fund is ending with a really, really good fund balance at the end of the fiscal year. Um, very, very healthy. If you were to go issue debt, there'd be a rating agency out there that would be very impressed by the fund balance that we have. Um, this slide, the next slide, kind of just shows a trend of some of the main, main uh, revenue sources of the general fund and just shows kind of how they've trended over the last few years. I think the key right here is that these revenue sources have outpaced your spending for all those years and that, that's pretty phenomenal. Um, the only decline that we've seen is in utility taxes and that is most likely completely due to the te telecommunications tax going down year after year as people move away from landlines and get cell phones instead. Okay, so I'm done, mm -hmm. and now we're going to go into the departments. I just want to make one quick footnote here. So one of the big things we want to continue to mention is the village is being debt-free. The board in the fall approved a $1.2 million use of general fund balance, which is what this, the vast majority of this 1545818 number is. The rest of that is capital. But despite that, the village only ran about $170,000 deficit. So we ran about a million dollars ahead of where we thought we were going to be in FY22 on a projected basis. So revenues are doing very well. Expenditures are being contained in a healthy manner. We're not just cutting for fun. We're containing costs and providing value whenever possible. A good example is our finance staffing approach. It saves money, but it doesn't hurt anybody to save that money. So well done to the board and to everybody who's helped contribute to make that number possible. So thank you, Anne Marie. At this point, we're going to go into some of our individual departments in the, in the general fund. These will be pretty brief. I'm going to quickly handle boards and commissions. So uh, this is just the spending related to the legislative functions of the village. More than half of the spending in this department is related to legal services. The village attorney does not work for the village administrator. Their office is appointed directly by the board. So I don't direct Mike. Mike does work with us. But at the same time, we, I don't have the power to physically direct Mike the way you guys do. But again, more than half of the spending in this department is related to that. Another, about a quarter of that is related to some of your outreach you do, uh, the village recognition dinner, um, some of the donations you make to senior organizations in the village and the like, some of those things. This is a fairly simple department um, on an overall basis. Question? Sorry, go ahead. So the second line on contractual services, that is comprised of legal services? It's 100% legal services. 100% legal services, so thank you. Yes. And then the personal services is paying the board. Yes, Trustee Snyder? Oh, the second line from the reviews, how much of that most of so I would say we've had an increase in FOIA cost, but we've had an overall decrease in legal services, and that's just being careful with, certainly we trust the legal opinions issued by the village attorney, but we've just been very careful to make sure we're careful about when we make those calls. As you can see, we had some years where it was up to 200, over 250, but we slowly brought that down, even though we've brought on new services like adjudication. So again, a good example of getting value for money, using the village attorney when we need to. So the big increase for 21 is probably due to over and above normal legal services. Legal services continue to go down. Correct. Correct. Looking forward to add the admin department. Uh, this is the department that I oversee as the village administrator. This has shrunk a little bit in the last year, and that's because we moved a lot of the community development functions out of this department. That's where that big drop in personnel services as well as contractual services. So the contractual is related to the building and zoning enforcement. We have contract consultants who do all of our reviews on a building code basis. We've moved those cost centers to public works. That's where the majority of the decreases come is just savings on FTE and then savings on some contractual services. But overall, we've done a nice job of containing a lot of our services here uh, overall. We're responsible for really uh, providing some leadership direction coordination regarding what the board does because I am your sole employee. I then work with my staff to bring back policy, which you have directed us to do. Uh, we do a lot of FOIA. We do a lot of community engagement. Uh, and we do a lot of special events as part of our overall mission. We have four full-time employees and three part-time employees in the FY23 budget. <clears throat> so of our brief budget highlights, we've did over 450 permit applications in FY22, or at least we think we're going to based on a projected basis. That's our highest total in over 10 years. Very proud of that work. 
Great cloud. Uh, and thankful the board has supported that function with an extra part-time person in FY22, which helps keep those permits moving smoothly. We've expanded our village communications and we've managed a number of reorganizations in our village, which overall we think has done a great job and has provided a lot of value, both financially, but also, also as well providing a lot of staff depth. In FY23, we're gonna lead the foundation CIP uh, project. Basically speaking, because we have so many capital improvements that we will need to be doing over the next 20 years, we wanna make sure we have an informational document which really records a lot of those things. The board will still get a good five-year uh, snapshot of what we're gonna spend, but ultimately something like a roof in year seven needs to be thought of when you're doing a lot of those considerations. So we wanna make sure a lot of those things are coordinated in one place. And this is a staff-only project. The board does not need to spend any money on it. This is just something that we want to do to really uh, communicate all the overall needs of the village in one-stop shop. Um, there is $30,000 in the village to continue to look at facilities through our existing architects. Uh, just to continue the discussion, we're calling it just village facility uh, discussion. We want to make sure that we can continue to make sure we keep that process going forward. So it's already in the budget. We're going to be revising some of our manuals in the next uh, 12 months, as well as doing a lot of support for our special events. You'll see in the hotel fund, we've really got a great special event and community engagement budget uh, and program laid out for our residents. So very pleased about that. Yes, please. When was the last time the personnel manual was revised? In full, about 20 years ago. So we need to really get under the hood and work through that. I'll be uh, using some of the services of the village attorney for that, but overall, it's just about bringing a lot of that up to up to modern uh, compliance. Thank you. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Anne Marie to be the finance department. Okay, so the finance department is really responsible for bringing all the money in and sending all the money out. So that's what we do on a daily basis. We've got two full-time uh, positions and then the two consultants, myself and Heather, who's sitting right there. I'm not sure if any of you guys have met her. Um, in 2022, a lot of time was spent on the transition of uh, full-time and um, somebody always here, finance director, to somebody only here sometimes. I think we've done really well. I think the full-time staff that are here still um, have acclimated to it and are doing really well. Um, as Evan mentioned, we did receive the GFOA award for the budget document with a special mention of the capital section. I did um, budget awards for 17 years and I never got that mentioned, so that's pretty cool. Um, in 2023, obviously we're gonna help out with the uh, CIP planning and documentation. Um, we're going to look at the long-term financial forecast and probably do some revisions to it just to kind of keep it out there, um, even if it's just an internal document, just to keep our eyes on the future. Um, review a lot of our policies. I know we did the capital policy last year, but we're going to review like our investment policy, cash management, things like that, just to make sure that they're up to date. Um, we're going to submit, obviously, for the annual um, um, Audited Financial Statement Award as well as the on annual Budget Award. But I'd also like to submit for the Popular Annual Financial Report Award, which really just takes your audit, which nobody reads because nobody can understand it, and it puts it in a really simple version. You submit it to GFOA and you get another award. It's something that we could use at a, as an annual report, put it on our website. So I'd like the department to um, apply for that. Long-term um, funding policy for the pension, I think that is something that we'll continue to talk about. And then we're just kind of reviewing all of the policies and practices within the department and trying to modernize, modernize some of the stuff we do. One of the big examples that we're doing right now is we pay all of our vendors by check, which is very antiquated. So we're uh, moving on to paying them by ACH or what they call a virtual credit card. So we're just looking for ways to be more efficient overall throughout the, throughout the village. That's it. I'm done. Thanks, Sam Ram and ask Chief John Madden to come up and present the police department. And then I'm going to take leave. I think I told you I need to run out to do something. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Trustee Francis will have the gavel, so to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be right back. Sorry, sorry, governmental of the governmental official of the year person right here. Thank you. Please. Good evening. Reader's Digest. Can we go to the next slide there? So for 2022, uh, the budget highlights real quick. We started two new programs uh, in this current budget. Uh, the administrative adjudication program is new, very successful program and our community service officer, that's a civilian position uh, that uh, we also implemented, implemented this year. Uh, extremely, extremely uh, 
extremely successful programs. We continue our fleet leasing transition with uh, to with Enterprise uh, to the Chevy Tahoe model. And uh, as we've discussed, we're on hold. We're about two years behind on our fleet replacement because of what's going on in supply chain and what the auto makes. So right now, I'm waiting to get information on the 23 model year for the Chevrolet Tahoes and the administrative packages. And I'll be able to provide that to the board in the future if anybody has any questions. We just don't know what the pricing and the incentives are at this point. Even though we have a five-year plan with Enterprise, we, we, it, it's like a strategic plan. We revisit it constantly every six months, every 12 months. So we're constantly in, in, in contact with them. Uh, lastly, for the highlights, the Kalia accreditation. We've been uh, nationally accredited as a law enforcement agency for the past, well, since 2007 was our first accreditation. It's extremely important uh, to the village. Uh, Irma recognizes the importance of law enforcement accreditation and actually subsidizes the cost by 25% for us. Chief, can you move a little closer to the microphone? I'm just trying to back away because I could hear it. It provides, law enforcement accreditation provides reduced risk and liability exposure for the village, and it provides a stronger defense against civil lawsuits, and we've seen that over the past 10 years. It gives us the best written directives that meet national standards and best practices in law enforcement. So we're very proud of the fact that we've been nationally accredited since 2007. Moving forward to this current budget, draft budget proposal, one of the biggest changes for us is a change in the structure in the police department. Over the years, uh, the duties have increased, at least over the past 10 years. Back in June or July of uh, 2021, uh, our record supervisor retired, which left uh, a vacancy that we tried to fill. Uh, rather than just filling that, we, we, we tried to analyze what we needed to meet the demands of what we have to get done in police administration, which is just the deputy chief and I for a 24 seven operation. What we did is we worked with the village administrator and we recreated that position to enhance the management responsibilities. Not only just to have a record supervisor, but someone, a civilian to work with us at our level to help us take some of the duties, especially what the the additional duties given to us last year in Springfield by the legislature. What we developed was a police um, uh, administrative manager that we, we advertised for. And unfortunately, out of all the applications, even with the enhanced salary, we were very difficult to find qualified individuals to fill that position. Out of many applications, we went down to four we had three offers. We offered three people uh, positions, and each one was countered by their home agency because they didn't want to lose them. But the police departments they worked for, they were, they were outstanding candidates. And we had one individual back out for personal reasons. So we were in December, we were back to square one, back to zero. So we really had to rethink what we were doing. We had to rethink uh, what, what are we going to do to to try to alleviate some of the, the, uh, the burden uh, on administration. Uh, what, we, what, we dis what I thought about was back in 2000, 2003 to 2008, we had an administrative sergeant, we had a deputy chief, and we had a chief. There were three management positions in the police department. In the Great Recession of 2008, uh, there were cuts village-wide. We lost many positions. We had to cut back. We had to do more with less. And in the police department, we went from 29 sworn positions down to 27. We lost that administrative sergeant position. There was nothing we could do. It was tough times. So over the past 10 years, that's how we proceeded. Since October of 2010, I have not appeared before this board and previous boards to ask for an increase in sworn personnel until today. The solution that we've come up to address this problem is to have a second deputy chief position, which state statute allows us to do as a non-home rule agency. Non-home rule agencies 
over 25 sworn are allowed to have two appointments for deputy chief and under 25 you're allowed to have one so rather than and, and also a difference in back in 2008 was the sergeants were not union our sergeants are now union The Safety Act, we're all aware of the Safety Act, we can talk about it for quite a long time, but there's significant additional mandates that we have to comply with in, in administration. A lot of it has to do with training mandates. Uh, there's a, your body cameras, as you know, in two and a half years, it's gonna be required for an agency our size. So what we're proposing in, in, this, in this draft <clears throat> budget is to eliminate the civilian record supervisor position and add a, a sworn deputy chief position, which would be promotions and, and then fill backfill that vacancy in patrol with another officer bringing us to 28 sworn. Doing so, I can tell this board, would provide the best structure to handle the management duties we have and the mandates we currently face. Uh, body-worn cameras, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gloss over that. We have taken delivery of our body-worn cameras. We're still waiting for the other equipment to come in. Um, another, uh, another item in the budget is to upgrade the, uh, uh, the computers in the, in the cars. The last time, they're going on seven years old, uh, and, and these are the patrol, in the patrol vehicles. So by the time we get it with supply chain, they'll probably be eight years old. So that's a normal replacement on the computer. And then lastly, to upgrade the police station security access system. So that we moved into the police department in 2010. Uh, what we're seeing now is, after 12 years, is failures. We've got two separate recording systems. We have one for interviews and interrogations, which is required by law. Uh, we have access control points that have failed over the years. We're replacing, we're replacing. We kept pushing it off, but it's getting to a point where our, our IT vendor is recommending that we address all of these, uh, these different systems and get them replaced. We've had failures. Of course, they only occur on Saturdays and Sundays or when you have 25 detectives working a major case. That's when they failed on us. So uh, it's long overdue, and uh, we've got a fantastic building. It's a great facility, so it's just an upgrade that needs to be done. I kind of went over everything quick. I'm trying to keep it consolidated, but I'll entertain any questions. Thank you, Chief. Any questions from the board? Chief Snyder. So, Chief, basically, the state imposes all these new jobs for you to follow up and go through everything. Did they give you any ideas how to pay for them? No. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions or comments? Trustee Scappa? Chief, thank you for the presentation. So in 2008, we had two deputy chiefs? No, we had, we had an administrative sergeant. Oh, and, okay. And the deputy chief, that was me. Yeah. And then uh, police chief. So there was three that were in management positions in police administration. Okay. And then because of the economy, we changed and, and the so. The recession, yeah, village-wide. Right. Class. And your records keeper was a civilian before she had retired. And Our record supervisor was a civilian. Yes. And you didn't. Your success. You didn't have much success replacing. Well, we we found four great yeah. candidates, but yeah. every time we made an offer, the home agency countered and gave them more money. And we, working with the village administrator, we put together a, a pretty uh, a pretty fair package. Yeah. The uh, the offers that they ended up receiving exceeded our entire pay range almost $100,000 for a civilian back in their home agency, just to give you some idea of what we were up against. Um, that was almost $40,000 more than the retiree uh, left at. So when I say there is competition for these people, it is no joke. Right. Well, Not a lot of people can do that job, and it's very important to be CALEA certified to keep the department running. Having a good records division and, and department is extremely important. So with this position, you'll most likely hire within and everyone kind of slots up and you know, fill, fill right. from the bottom. We have to promote from within. We yeah. cannot take from the outside. Being non-home rule, we're very limited okay. on, on that. 
uh, civilian positions, of course, we can take the yeah. hire from the outside, correct. But entry level is the only position in a sworn position that can come from the outside besides me. Okay. Besides the police chief. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Jesse Pavesa, did you have any questions? Uh, <clears throat> not right now. They more or less answered them. Thank you. Trustee Smith. So, um, thank you, Chief. So, you heard my um, commentary about the police pension. This kind of goes up against what I'm asking for. Um, if you go to s page 137 in our, in our budget, you'll see the expense line for the second deputy chief of $131,000. Our residents and the board need to know that's not the full story. We, if we hire a deputy chief, now includes another vehicle, would also include more pension costs so if we are only adding $24,000 for this fiscal year to our pension fund, and we are going to potentially spend an extra, whatever that is for this position, that math doesn't work for me. And I don't think it works for our residents. There's gotta be other solutions that can be provided to this board besides hiring another pension administrative person. There's gotta be, some other solutions because we can't just keep building up this pension without some type of give and take and i understand that we're in anticipation of a lot of work going forward but we don't know that work yet we can only just estimate there's going to be a higher workload i would still like to sit here today and say can we look at more administrative civil things versus a, another pension position before he answers that, can I give another question that goes right on with Trustee Smith? Okay, please. Chief, what's our number one goal for the village of Burridge? Safety. Public safety, okay. If we try and cut back anymore or do something like that, that direction, does it, could this affect the safety? Well, let me, let me answer this way. I know the work, we know the work. We've been dealing with it for the past 10 years. It gradually increases over the years. We're not bringing in an individual from the outside. We're promoting a sergeant. One of the sergeants, that would be the increase. Okay. The, the individual coming in is an entry level patrol officer. So, as I said, back in 2008, we had 29 sworn. And we were reduced through a retirement attrition to 27. So my goal over the past 12 years was to keep those costs down. That's why I have not approached the board in the past 12 plus years for an increase in any sworn positions. And that was my goal with this position. My goal was come up with a solution to address all of the mandates that start July 1st, January 1st of 23, the workload that we have, sometimes it's like whack-a-mole. We're running back and forth trying to keep up. My goal was not to increase the sworn position. It was to bring, take that existing civilian position, work with the village administrator, propose an increase in salary to bring in a professional, a manager, to help us to take some of the duties that that non-sworn person could take. We tried. We're, obviously, those municipalities are paying way more than we are. It gets to a point with the priority of staying at 27 sworn over the past 12 years, keeping overtime costs down, which is another priority in every budget of mine. It starts working against us. It starts working against the operations of the police department. I understand the pension issues. I understand what you're talking about. But I'm not doing my job if I don't come to you with a solution that is in the best interest of the police department operations and the citizens. I've tried and I've done my best to not come to you on previous boards and ask for more police officers. I haven't done it. I haven't. We are to the point after 12 plus years where it, I have to. If we're gonna do this the right way, and we've got a lot of mandates, unfunded mandates, 
Those trustee Snyder said, are they gonna pay for it? No, they're not paying for it. Significant amount of training. The technology alone over the years, every year, just increases. Um, the technology, we spend so much time with equipment in the vehicles, okay? I, I have a list you, in the duties that should have been in the report, you could see. That's not fluff, that's real day-to-day -day duties that two guys do, myself and the deputy chief. I can't find a civilian out there that would and pay them what the records are a police civilian police manager would be paid to do the job. I know there are other police departments that have civilians in those manager positions for 120,000 plus. I do. I'm, I'm aware of the pension uh, issues and the funding, and but I'm. In my opinion, this is the best way to proceed. This is the best way to proceed. One other comment. So this is not about um, safety to our residents. This is about administrative work in the back office. And I'm going to say again, we're talking about a, probably a two hundred thousand dollar bill to our residents. I'll be against this. I think we can do administratively civil, bring somebody in for a lot less money. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call up Public Works Director Pricek to cover the Public Works Department. Headed to our work on this and responsibilities too by taking in the community development division. As you heard uh, the administrator mention before, staff decreased in administration. We took that on in public works. It's a great synergy. Um, we're excited to have Janine Farrell as our new community development director. Um, as you heard a little bit more about tonight, taking an honor to Beltran too as uh, the assistant too and as our economic development coordinator. We, we took on additional duties and it's just working out really well. That's why you see a lot of the changes in the, in the tables there. Um, so now we've assimilated 18 full-time employees and four full-time So the next slide, um, kind of the highlights of what FY 22 and 23 were is that, um, you know, we were back here in June dealing with that tornado. Um, you all heard about what we did there, where we, where we tackled that, really with the in-house staff and equipment. Then we went out for mutual aid from the other agencies where we needed more help there. We, we took on work contractually. So you see some of those numbers reflected in the from the past year. And again, as I mentioned before, um, just things are working out really well now with the community development division of public works. Um, as we mentioned before, the, the Foundation Burr Ridge, the capital improvement plan, we'll be working with that. Um, kind of first and foremost, really, out of this department. Um, but then, <laughs> item number two, pursue and acquire stormwater facility financing. I think we can check that box off already. As, as the trustees heard before, we got in that grant of you know, $785,000 from uh, Representative Kasten's office. Um, but we won't stop there. There's other work we have to do, so we'll be looking at other sources too. Um, modernize the village building codes. That's really an update. We were dealing with 2012 building codes. Having our new community development director, we now have some of the bandwidth and, and ability and expertise to take on what should be now 2021. That's in line with what other communities are doing. Um, so we're not falling behind there, but we have been in the past. On um, the 2023 road program, you'll hear more about next next time. Uh, we have our bid opening this coming Friday. We're, um, we're on schedule. We've got an early bid opening earlier on in the year. Uh, we're, we're out ahead of a, a big state budget or a state, big state lighting. So we're hoping we, we grab those contractors while they're still a little bit hungry to get work. Um, as you heard Chief mention before, the security access system at, public, at the police department will be modernized too with additional cameras, servers, um, and recorders. Um, and then the village hall security upgrades. That's been um, kind of pushed around a little bit more. We have that grant from Homeland Security to do a little bit of the same work over here in terms of getting the um, card readers on, on the doors for a better access control system as well here. Um, the additional chloride tank with the two new trucks we just got on, we are fully functional with the, um, the, with the pre wetting systems. So we're using that a lot more. We need additional capacity in bringing those liquids in. To again, decrease our salt use and, and keep up the effectiveness of our snow and ice control operations. And then the boardroom and dais improvements. 
So we've heard a little bit more about, we'll be adding some, uh, some improvements for accessibility. So on the last slide, I want to work with me on this one. Um, this is where those uh, big numbers come in in the, in the foundation burn rates, capital improvements. Um, kind of the highlights out here are both in equipment and in improvements. Um, some of the improvements are, as we mentioned, the police station, the, um, the village hall access control systems are already checked off, and then the boardroom improvements. In terms of equipment, what I haven't mentioned yet is a floor scrubber replacement. That's a 20 plus year old piece of equipment that we didn't have no floor drains in public works. Uh, so that is really what, what takes up the snow and ice that melt off the trucks and you know, slips, trips, and falls and just keeps the floor shop clean too for safety. Um, it's, we're running out of time on, on getting replacement parts for that. Now the liquid chloride tank we heard mentioned before and then there's a compressor replacement um, that feeds a lot of the tools and other items that we've got at the shop. It's original to the building from when it was a, a, a case building. Um, so it's well past its uh, serviceable life. So it's, uh, it's starting to fall apart. We're, we're finding, having a hard time finding replacement pieces that'll be replaced this coming year. And now time, I'll turn it back over to Evan unless there's any questions. Thank you. Uh, so we're concluding the general fund at this time. Any additional comments, questions, et cetera, before we move forward? Hearing none. Okay. We're going to continue on. We're, we're getting into the, uh, the back of the budget here, a little more uh, niche. Uh, the first one is going to be our special revenue funds. The first is the hotel motel fund. This is basically the tourism tax that you collect 4% on a price of a room. Um, we've rebounded very nicely in this fund. Uh, as you can see, we got it all the way down to 290 and 21, brought it all the way back to almost $600,000 this year and over $600,000 next year. So we're about 90% of pre-pandemic levels and, and we're very proud of that. We've done a lot of work to support our hotels. We had the tourism recovery program right at the beginning of the pandemic. We obviously did not lose any hotels through the pandemic, other communities did. But as you can see, we've got a really nice uh, tourism base, which really contributes to the economy, our places of eating tax, and a number of other things. So it's a really great part of our economy overall. Um, the main things that I just want to highlight about this um, are that we've got the largest uh, special events marketing budget going ever this year. Um, we've got some brand new events coming in from last year, the Taste of Bridge, the Car Show, which was extremely successful. We had the Remade uh, Jingle Mingle, which became Deck the Green. We're going to significantly expand both. The Run the Ridge 5K and 1K, unfortunately, Trustee Shop and not the 10K, where the marathon is not is back in the calendar for May 7th, so um, I'll be running it with a stroller. If you can beat me, kudos. Uh -huh. um, at that point, uh, we'll have Armed Forces Day. We've got nine concerts, the Taste, the Car Show, and Deck the Green. Uh, we've also got a number of other uh, upgrades planned for each of those events. Um, we've also got some gateway sign replacements planned in this budget. Uh, if you've been around town, you've seen some of our wooden Burr Ridge uh, leaf signs, they're, they're pretty worn, they've, they've seen better days. I think it's time we replace most of those as best we can. Some of the more prominent ones, we'd like to add some landscaping, a little, uh, a little greenery to it, uh, just to help make it look a little bit better as you enter our fine community. Uh, the Veterans Memorial Landscaping uh, is going to get a $25,000 infusion from this fund. Uh, several trees were taken down, major trees uh, were removed, and so we want to make sure that um, memorial to those who served our country looks as good as possible, so there is a, a transfer there. And they're also going to upgrade the, uh, the sound system at concerts. If, if you've been there, um, you notice it's, it's kind of just loud. Um, it's not as sharp as it could be. So Hannah's going to work with our audio engineer and really tune that up. So you'll hear a definite upgrade in your experience at the concerts going forward. We've also increased the budget on some of the bands. So you'll see a few new bands. Most of the old favorites will be there. But at the end of the day, we're really looking forward to the, uh, the new events that we're going to have here um, at the end of the day. There is some resident marketing that we're going to be doing as well. Um, so again, we're really excited for some of the great uh, community engagement that we're going to do throughout this fund. I'm also going to cover briefly the downtown business district fund. As you can see, this fund didn't exist until FY22. There are no current expenditures planned. The only transfer out in FY22 is simply repaying the village for the cost of studying uh, the item. There's a little bit of legal cost, but most of that goes to our consultant who helped us do the studies. Um, so that's the reason for those transfers out. But as you can see, we're generating some nice revenue in there for ultimately uh, purposes of the board decrees uh, to be appropriate. And, and these are pretty wide open in terms of what you can do on both the public and private side. Um, we'll certainly be talking about this going forward in the future. Um, at this point, I'd like to call uh, Anne Marie and Dave back up to the microphone to uh, finish with our CIFs and our, some of our internal funds. Thanks. Any questions or comments about the Hotel Motel Tax Fund or the new capital improvements? I'm sorry, the new um, downtown business fund? Yes, Evan. Evan, you mentioned that there's a $200,000 expense for the um, 
for the community events, a lot of that is going to get reimbursed from sponsorships from the local businesses, correct? We're projecting record revenue in the fund on that as well. To offset that. To offset that, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Just a general comment about the, the hotels that survived the pandemic. Uh, we were very fortunate not to have any closed, like Evan said. We also had a, a new hotel open up just before the pandemic and that hotel survived as well. So we were very fortunate. We were able to provide some funding to them uh, in, in forms of relief during the pandemic and it seems to have paid off. And uh, so we're very fortunate. Thank you. Speak up please, in the microphone. What's going to happen here at Village Hall in, uh, in the next few years to um, maintain or improve it as compared to what we need over at the police department as well um, in terms of and then also bringing up to from Mustard Acres into public works at our main facility at 451. So there's a lot of facility improvements that we've mentioned in the past, some condition studies we've done and presented on before. This is really value engineering to you know, get the best improvement at, at all three of those buildings going forward. The Wolf Road pedestrian signal since 2016. We've been talking about this project. Um, we finally got some impetus, maybe even a safe routes to school grant we've applied for. We should be hearing about that soon, but if not, we've got, um, you know, this is a placeholder because the school is going to go forward with some else, with some of that extra in conjunction with the park district across the street. This is by Pleasantdale Middle School, Walker Park, um, where we put up some flashing beacon at that crossing. So those four are kind of the big highlights for the expenditure side. Any questions on the capital improvements fund? Any questions for Mr. Pricing? Thank you, Dave. Then the next slide, then the stormwater management fund will just really gloss over. Um, this number will change dramatically as we talk the next time, and, and this is where I think that grant is going to go into um, to improve the Elm Street culvert. Uh, at, $785,000 grant from Senator Kessler, from Representative Kesson's office will show up here in FY 2024. Um, but we'll have some engineering costs in the meantime to get that, to redesign the smaller culvert we were going forward with into the larger one that we can afford uh, with that. So you see some of these uh, some of these numbers change next time. But again, I just want to make sure that's pretty well understood by the board as well as the public. We were going to have a $500,000 improvement as of a month ago, but the board was patient saw the grant process too, and now you're going to get three times the size of the stormwater capacity as you had originally budgeted for less than half the cost due to your patients. So well done. Thank you for that. And uh, we'll be bringing that forward here soon. Thank you. Thanks. The next slide, the water. I, I would have to say it's, thank you very much for that kind compliment to us, but I think it's basically your staff, the, the whole department. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. The water fund is one of the two enterprise funds. Again, the enterprise funds are self-contained um, where the, the water revenue in um, funds and maintains the, the distribution system on the outside. Um, so the, the revenue is the consumption of water and the tap-on fees. Uh, the expenses are 
the pumping, storage, um, maintenance, quality assurance testing, um, you know, and just general pipe main break repairs and stuff to maintain the water distribution system that, that brings the potable water to homes and businesses in Burr Ridge. Um, so on the last slide here, uh, the budget highlights for there is that this past year we upgraded the pump center control system. That was the SCADA system, the um, supervisor control and data acquisition. That's kind of our remote sensing systems. And then the valve, the, the main feed valve into the, into the pump center. 2023, um, the water committee has heard several times the um, operations systems, the sustainability study and the hydraulic water model, water rate studies, um, everything that we've had studied over the last couple of years is kind of driving the capital improvements in the water fund. Um, so we're gonna be implementing the, the list of projects that we're gonna see next. That's $10 million over, over the few years that we've planned for. Um, so on this slide, this is the projects we've been talking about at, at length in the water committee. Um, we mentioned in November, February, and then most recently March 10th at their board meeting. Um, the South Water Tower Rehab um, is really to paint the inside, the outside, uh, rehabilitating, rejuvenating, uh, revitalizing the, the tank uh, to maintain that 300,000 gallon structure over on um, 83rd Street. Um, there is a $200,000 grant from the DCO or from the DMMC that will be applying towards that. Um, so that'll be reflected too. AMI technology, this is gonna be a great project going forward. It's the uh, automated meter and infrastructure. That's gonna allow us to more efficiently and effectively um, keep reading the meters where before we were driving by every two months, um, we can enhance that utility billing process by having fixed point systems that are reading those same meters but we're just reading driving by. So that's gonna change the system a little bit and really increase our effectiveness. Um, the engineering um, for the North and South Water Tower, again, is kind of together with the first item I mentioned. Uh, the interconnection with, uh, with Justice Willow Springs, that's gonna enhance and a redundant um, water supply system that we have. We, we get our main supply from Bedford Park, but in the event that something goes wrong there, we're fed by the Justice Willow Springs Water Commission as we were before um, 1995 and 96 when we took on the, the Bedford Park feed. So should something go wrong, we've got this extra connection now, um, largely funded by the Illinois Tollway as part of their Tollway um, I-294 project. We, we're gonna have an intergovernmental agreement with the Tollway system that we would have otherwise spent four to five hundred thousand dollars on a project, um, maybe even more. Now it's going to be shared between the Tollway, the Justice Willow Springs Water Commission, and Burr Ridge. Um, so that's a, a, a small expense for a, just having a more resilient system. The Woodview Estates Kaelin Park Water Main Connection is one of those projects identified in the water system study as, as being a number one priority. So we're going to have the engineering uh, that feeds into that, a larger water main replacement project on the north end of town uh, in a future fiscal year. Um, the utility hunter, uh, pipe hunter, jetter, and trailer is, is really going to be a, a diverse piece of equipment we're going to use throughout our department um, to replace a, a failing um, jetter system that we've got um, and, and is going to enhance some of the operations that we've lost when we lost our street sweeping years ago. Um, and the pump center security upgrades is also partly funded by a, a Homeland Security grant to add fencing and hatch uh, security around the pump center on German Church Road. And bringing up the rear, um, the tail end of our presentation is the sewer fund, um, dealing with those kinds of things. Um, it's also an enterprise fund. The, um, uh, again, the, the, the cost of services here uh, with the sewer fees go into maintaining uh, the collection system. Um, the collection system for our sewer fund is only on the Cook County side. Um, that's the collection system that then feeds in the, into the MWRD, the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District treatment plant. On the DuPage side, you've got DuPage County and, uh, and Flag Creek. Um, but really, it's just down to one thing at this point. Um, we, we did the Chase Moore lift station. If you haven't been on Burr Oak Lane, it's kind of a muddy mess right now, but that um, pump system is, is working beautifully. Um, we'll make it more beautiful on the outside uh, in the spring of 2020, of, of this spring as we end our landscaping. Um, but then this, this coming fiscal year, we've got the 2023, um, fiscal year 2023 on the next slide. It's really just one thing, it boils down to the uh, inflow and infiltration control program. Um, on the next slide are the capital projects planned in the sewer fund. Uh, the IACP, the inflow infiltration control program is something that's coming down from the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. This is to uh, reduce, eliminate as much as we can the um, cracked pipes that are taking on extra stormwater stuff. It's not sewage, it's not extra water that doesn't have to be treated down at the treatment plant. 
So in summary, that's, that's a benefit to us too because we get a better handle on what our underground pipes look like. And again, the, the pipe hunter generator trailer, half of that cost would be shared in the sewer fund because of some of its functionality here. And that all right. Um, thank you for your patience. At this point, we have concluded the staff side of the budget presentation. We will turn it back over to the board for any further discussion and the like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So at this point, we'll have some board discussion. Uh, who would like to start? Trustee Scott, any questions or comments overall on the board from the, from, uh, the, board on, on, on the budget presentation? I think it was an excellently prepared budget by the finance team. Um, very fluid, it's easy to read. I understood it. Um, I know all of us sat down with Evan uh, to go through it in detail, uh, which I appreciate. And you know, I, Trustee Smith, I appreciate your concern for um, you know, the police pension. It's been on our minds. It's been on my mind since I've been elected to make sure that uh, we stay responsible in, in keeping that paid. But, you know, at, just so that I understand. If our pension is 100% funded, that means every sworn officer can retire that day. Is that correct? Correct. You would have all of the value of your fund prepared to cover any liability that right. may exist in the future. And that means every sworn officer can retire if we're 100% funded. Or you can fund the actuarial value of all the already retires as well. So that you've got some people who've already retired, plus everybody's on your force today. Well, my point is, I don't think that's responsible of us to be to shoot for 100% funding because that I don't think that's where our tax dollars, residents' tax dollars, should go to. You know, a, a goal of 100% funding. I think at 72%. I think we're, uh, we've got a strong position in the police pension. You know, I'd love to be at where our neighbors, Willowbrook is at. We have a, a Target, Portillo's, you know, they've got quite a bit of sales tax revenue, the sales tax revenue that we don't see have here in, in, in the village. Um, so, you know, I understand that. And, you know, going back to that, that second deputy chief, um, I'm in 100% support of it. Uh, I do believe it contributes to the safety of our residents here because someone has to put the schedule together for the officers to work. Someone's got to tend to them when they potentially may get hurt. Someone's got to tend to them when there's a high risk situation. And all of that's got to be documented, all of it. And now with our increase in regulations from our state, it's become a burden for our department and I believe that it's deserved to have that, that second position. Uh, and it's something that will help and contribute to safety of our residents. And uh, beyond that, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with the budget. Um, you know, I think kudos to the staff on putting together a budget where our expenses meet our revenues you know, and that's responsible budgeting uh, without dip, dip, dipping into our general fund which I know we have in the past so I'm excited to see that um, we are meeting our ex our revenues are meeting our, exp our expenses thank you Evan. This is a quick addendum to that. Um, one of the things that the staff tries to do is have the goals meet the revenue. Um, we don't try to spend money less than revenues, just to be clear. Um, we put everything in the budget that we felt needed to be fixed or upgraded or the like based on the useful life, the staffing needs, or the expectations of the board representative of the community. We talk about priority and value at the staff level every week at our staff meetings. If there's anything in the budget which does not present a priority, it does not go in the budget. And if we feel like it is a priority based on what you as a board tell us is, we have to meet it at a value. We try to meet those out by saying what, do we, what can we do and what is the best value to provide the resident or the taxpayer. 
So I just want to give you a, just a, a secondary perspective on how we approach finances with a budget, that it's really goals meeting revenues. And we can save money, we always try to, but we certainly want to make sure we provide value that is effective. There is nothing worse than paying for something that's ineffective. So just wanted to provide that perspective from the staff side. Thank you. Trustee Bebeza, any questions or comments on the budgeting process? Uh, again, uh, like uh, the other trustees have said, I uh, believe they've done another great job of uh, presenting the budget. And for the, uh, the way they've presented it in detail, <clears throat> the residents can see where we spend our money. And that's important. It ain't, uh, the police, the public works got 800,000. It's where we spend the money is detailed. And that's one of the main reasons I like about it. Also, we all have uh, our opinion on the police pension, but just to make a comment of all the uh, villages and all the, the cities, we are in the top third as far as our funding goes. That means two thirds of all the villages and towns are below us as far as uh, uh, funding goes. And uh, I just wanted to make, make the comment on how great the uh, detail was in presenting everything. Thank you, Thank you. Trustee Paveza. Trustee Smith, questions or comments about the budget presentation? I'm gonna go with you. <laughs> Okay, thank you, um, Trustee Frenzy. So there's, uh, I love the work that's being done. I also like the fact that we as a village are kind of taking some big chunks out of some needs for the residents, such as the Elm Street um, culvert replacement, some of our road programs. So I think this budget is gonna definitely show to our residents that we are clearly very aggressive on keeping Burr Ridge a very special place. Thank you. Trustee Snyder. Congratulations to both administration, finance, and water. You know, this is probably the best budget I've seen since I've been here. Not only detailed, concise. And Evan, when you said you wanted to put together a team, I congratulate you personally because the team that you put together between the chief and all everyone else, by far, everyone's working together, trying to come to the bottom line. So I want to thank you. You know, when we discussed paying off the building, Back in the day, I was against it. Everyone was for it because I felt strongly when someone's offering us one percent money, I know I can make more than one percent somewhere else. And we just got twenty-three percent. I understand it's a special place, but you have no debt. Great. Same with the police pension. Whether we give some money today or the full bullet tomorrow, I believe we're still going to be working. It's still going to be fine. So I want to thank all both all the trustees, Trustee Smith, and everyone's input on the good this valid discussion. But overall, I think it was just well done. I want to thank administration and all the staff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one, a few comments on my own. Uh, I agree with the other trustees about the quality of the work and the quality of the budget, budget presentation. <laughs> it was exceptional. This is by far the easiest budget I, I, I've been able to, to digest and also the most concise as well as the easiest to understand. Uh, we hear a lot of comments from the residents about the property, their property tax <laughs> bill. And uh, if, if you take a close look at your property tax bill, you'll see that approximately 1.5% of that bill goes to this village. 98.5% go to the other taxing bodies, only 1.5%. So that means if you have a $10,000 tax bill, $150 of that tax bill pays for 24 hour a day, seven day a week, 365 day a year police protection. It pays for our road maintenance. It pays for snow plowing and salting. It pays for our infrastructure maintenance. Uh, of water mains, sewer mains, and pathways. And, and we don't, this village doesn't rely on junk fees and junk, junk uh, taxes and such uh, like uh, some other villages do. Uh, we don't have red light cameras. Uh, we, we don't feel the need for those. So uh, uh, this village has been very responsible over the years. Previous boards have been responsible over the years to make sure that uh, the money that's being taken in by the village, that 1.5% cent is being spent wisely and to serve the needs of the residences, residents. Uh, uh, to make a few comments about the additional deputy chief. Back in 2000, we had 10,408 residents here in this village, according to that, the 2000 census. In 2020, the census told us we had 11,192 residents, or an increase of 784 residents, or 7.5% increase in residents. 
Back in 2000, we had 20, 28 sworn, 29 sworn, 29 sworn officers. Today we have 27, a decrease of two. We're asking for one more. Not only has the workload increased because of the unfunded state mandates that we, we talked about earlier, uh, but also the additional workload has been uh, increased on every officer because of what the state is requiring every officer to do to, to, to protect the residents of, the, of this village. So uh, I support adding the uh, second deputy chief, and I, I feel it will greatly spread the workload out evenly amongst the administrative officers of, of the village, and it will better serve the residents of our village. Thank you. One final comment, Trustee one Snyder. Final, if one, one of my final statements is again, Chief, thank you for 12 years not coming to the board and asking for extras. And <laughs> one day it is, so thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Thank you. So. Okay. So at this point, we will take uh, some time to re-examine the budget. Again, there'll be a few changes at the fund balance level. Uh, we're going to have road bid opening. We're going to have some corrections based on newer sales tax reports. Uh, we had a decrease in our health costs. Um, we've had a number of things just come up to date. We want to take another look at the eco economic stuff like the price of fuel. Uh, so we just want to make sure those are accurately reflected. So we will have some fund balance changes in some of the funds. Um, we just want to make sure we present the most reflective, up-to-date information at that time. Uh, but at that point, again, March 28th will be our last opportunity for public direction from the board for April 11th. So we will communicate as early as we can. Uh, please call me or staff if you'd like to review anything. But at that point, um, we're done tonight based on the budget. Thank you. Thank you for a great, great presentation, all of you. Thank you. Moving along, section nine, public comments. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the board at this time? Seeing no one, uh, 10, reports and communications from village officials. Trustee Paveza. I believe the uh, Secretary of State's coming this week, I think. Yes. So uh, this week, Wednesday, March 16th, the Secretary of State will be at the Village Hall from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for a mobile DMV event. This event is open to the public. Services, include, services offered include renewal of driver's licenses, issuances, issuance of state IDs, and purchase of Illinois license plate stickers. No written or driving tests will be performed, and the real ID cannot be obtained at this mobile event. So if you need some of those services like a driver's license renewal or a new sticker or a new state ID, uh, please attend March, 14th, March 16th, this Wednesday, at the Village Hall, here from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Uh, item agenda, agenda 11 is a, we will be moving into closed session. I'm sorry, you had a comment? Yeah, one last comment. I think, yes. Um, you have mentioned, Trustee Smith has mentioned about a goals workshop. So I wanted to uh, move forward with setting that up. Uh, I think it would be an excellent opportunity to establish where we are now and where we want to be in yeah. the next year, three years, five years. 10 years. Okay. We can get that moving forward, please? Of course. Thank you. With the, with the consensus of the board? Thank you. Anything else? Or the communications from village officials? Seeing none, let's uh, move into closed session. Could I have a motion, please? A motion to recess. A motion to recess into closed session, which means you'll be returning because there are two other agenda items to be approved. So moved. Second. And that motion is to recess into closed session to discuss collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees under 5 ILCS 120-2C2. So a motion from Trustee Scappa, a second from Trustee Snyder. Roll call, please. Trustee Scappa? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Five zero. Five zero. We are in closed session. Thank you. In session, the open section of the meeting. We are out of closed uh, session. We need another new roll call. Uh, we need a roll call. Thank you. 
Trustee Franzese. Here. Trustee Schiappa. Here. Trustee Paveza. Here. Trustee Snyder. Here. Trustee Mattel, no. Trustee Smith. Here. Mayor Grasso. Here. Is there anybody out in the hallway? Wait down the door, please. Should we get the guy with the bad foot to have energy? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Microphone for the mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are back in open session. Um, can I get a motion to approve the employment contract between the Village of Burr Ridge and the International Union of Operating Engineers Local 50? So moved. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion amongst uh, anybody on the board? Any comment or questions from anybody in the audience or public? <coughs> Roll call, please. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. 5 0. 5 0, that motion passes. 12 B. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the employment contract between the Village of Burr Ridge and Metropolitan Alliance of Police, Burr Ridge Command, number 13? So moved. Second. We have a motion. Uh, we have a second. Um, uh, any questions by anybody uh, on the board? Any comments or questions from anybody in the public? Roll call, please. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Five zero. Five zero, the motion passes. Can I get one more motion? And that is to adjourn to March 28, 2022, at 7 p.m. Before that, uh, may I ask that the board members and I will be working, as Justice Gap would like to know, March 27th in Florida, so we'll have the opportunity to call in in a couple weeks' notice. Yep, and um, um, you've satisfied that, and make, we'll make the motion at the time. Thank you. Um, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting me get out. Uh, by the way, if people like having an earlier meeting,